I'm Sarah Evans. I'm an assistant professor in environmental medicine and public health at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. So vinyl chloride is actually a known human carcinogen, meaning that it's known to cause cancer in humans. Um, and that's according to both the United States Environmental Protection Agency and the World Health Organization. And so exposure to vinyl chloride that happens in a factory setting, typically through inhalation of the vinyl chloride gas, uh, has been shown to increase risk of cancers like liver cancer, brain cancer, some blood cancers, and liver disease. Historically, factories that manufacture PVC have been localized to communities of color and impoverished communities. Um, and that's a real legacy that we have here in this country. Those, those communities have been disproportionately burdened by exposure. Um, you know, I mentioned that during PVC production, vinyl chloride, as well as dioxins and other chemicals contaminate the air and the water around those communities. And we've seen higher rates of cancers and illnesses in the, in the people who live in those communities who tend to be black and brown communities. And this has been really a prime example of environmental racism in this country where black and brown individuals are disproportionately burdened with harmful chemical exposures. But we also see, you know, beyond communities that live close to factories like this, that black and brown communities have higher exposures to many of the chemicals that are associated with PVC plastics. And factories aren't the only way people can be exposed to the dangers of PVC. Everyone is impacted by what happens when PVC is disposed of. Um, and I think about the massive amount of food and product packaging that gets discarded every day. And those materials then leach chemicals into landfills and into groundwater. And they also release dioxins when they're burned. And dioxins are other known cancer-causing substances. It's actually a really big problem in the disposal of medical waste, um, much of which contains PVC, um, because those products need to be incinerated. We can't really overlook the complete life cycle of PVC and its potential health impacts. So the gaseous vinyl chloride isn't the only way PVC can be harmful to humans. One of the additives which are used to make PVC flexible and transform it into a shower curtain, lunchbox, or pipe are called phthalates. That's somehow spelled P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S. And they're often the cause of PVC's health effects in consumers. Phthalates are one of those hormone-disrupting chemicals, and they're classified actually as possible human carcinogens. They're also linked to hormone disruption, impaired reproductive development, learning and behavior problems, and even the increased risk of asthma and allergy. Oh, okay. And these phthalates are pretty impossible to avoid. So to focus on the risks of exposure through the everyday use of consumer products, which is a situation that, that most of us experience, we know that the products that are made with PVC release chemicals that get into our body. So those additives that I mentioned are not tightly bound to the PVC and they leach out into our homes and our foods. And we know from studies that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention conduct every other year called the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, or NHANES for short, that phthalate chemicals, for example, are measured in the blood of almost all Americans that are tested. And so we also know that PVC is likely a major source of this exposure. Studies of people who live in homes that have vinyl flooring, for example, show higher levels of phthalates in the dust of those homes, as well as in the urine of children that reside in those homes. So suggesting that PVC in those building products is actually getting into the bodies of people who live there. So, according to Dr. Evans, PVC is a widely used plastic and it can be harmful to human health in a variety of ways. Even people like me, who don't work in a factory and don't live near one, might be exposed to related chemicals just through everyday life. It's so difficult to wrap your head around how widespread these health effects are. And it's also really hard to figure out what chemicals are in products we use every day. Yeah, so we have a big problem with transparency in products in this country. Um, so not everything comes with an ingredients label, unfortunately. And that's we really see that for things like building products and 
even toys and things that are intended for children. So it can be really challenging. You know, I encourage people to look all over a product and see if it has a number three recycling symbol or if it says vinyl or if it says PVC or polyvinyl chloride. Often it, it, it won't because it doesn't have to. And so that might require pursuing the manufacturer, contacting the manufacturer to try to find out what the product is made of. There are some great advocacy organizations out there that do third party testing and have created lists and guides so that you can look for a safer alternative and know which products contain PVC, which products are also contaminated with phthalates or lead or cadmium.